Hi there. Welcome back to the Daily Blessings Showcase, uh, where we are previewing the 10 dimensions of abiding in God and also the Daily Blessings method that is explored in the Daily Blessings Journal. It is a mindfulness journal on the goodness of God and also filled with devotionals to help you um, understand what abiding is and how to, uh, um, to adopt this as an actual practice in your life. And so I am the author, uh, Marshawn Evans Daniels. I'm so grateful that God has trusted me with this message, with this word, with this teaching, really, and even this system. I firmly believe that every struggle is a sign of a missing system. I teach that in business, but it also applies to life. And I think it also applies to our spiritual health. Um, every struggle is a sign of a missing system. So that's why the daily blessing method is so important. You'll begin your day with the whispers of the Holy Spirit and the word of God. You'll begin your day calibrating your mind so that you can operate with the mind of Christ. And then throughout your day, you're going to operate with expectancy. So this is where supernatural gratitude, appreciation, and affirmation come into play. When we are calibrated with the frequency of supernatural gratitude, that gives us eyes to be able to see what God is bringing to us. Remember, we're on section seven now. We're talking about provision. Part of being able to receive provision is to have vision to see that it is being provided. Okay, this is really simple, but really deep at the same time. Sometimes we can't see what God is doing because we're seeing what we're seeing. We're seeing what we're looking at and whatever focus, whatever you focus on is what you find. What you give your energy to is what will expand. And so there's a reason why if you focus on what's not happening, your life will continue to feel like it's out of alignment, like things are bad and that things are happening to you as opposed to an elevated belief system through elevated vision, that things are happening for you. And in order to believe that, you've got to believe first and foremost that God is for you. But we can forget that. We can forget that when we're operating with a lower dimensional mind, when our eyes are focused on what we see in the physical, what's happening and believing that we're under attack, even though the word says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. What if it wasn't an attack, but an alignment, an invitation for redirection or to experience more of God's protection and as we're in the seventh dimension, more of God's provision. And so you'll begin your day with affirmation and appreciation and um, the whispers of God. But during the day, you're going to look for these moments of goodness, greatness, and gratitude where you see God show up through anything throughout the day. And now by the time, if you're already in the seventh dimension, in the seventh pillar, going through your daily blessings process over these several weeks now, seven going into your seventh week, then you are now becoming really calibrated. You, you should be feeling pretty supernaturally supported and more grateful for what's around you. But this is how we begin to be able to see what God is sending. We have to be able to have vision. The word says without a vision, the people perish. It doesn't just mean you have a vision for what's coming. It doesn't mean you have a vision for what will be. It doesn't mean you just even have this big vision for your life, which we want you to have that. But it could just, can I see what God sees the way he sees it right now? Because without that, there are things that perish in our lives, that die in our lives. Our hope, our belief, our relationships, our our bodies can, can um encounter physical ailments. Another translation of that scripture of without a vision, the people perish says that without, when the people cannot see, oh, this is so good. Um, when the people cannot see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. So hopefully you're seeing the connection between, I'm not talking about positive thinking, that's optimism. I'm talking about um, holy mindfulness, and I'm talking about the frequency of the kingdom and being able to see what God is doing, not just the bright side. We're talking about the kingdom side. We're talking about um, what the, what, where the Holy Spirit, the side that the Holy Spirit is, getting you being, is giving you eyes to be able to see that side of it. 
It's a, it seems like a small difference, but it's a massively big difference because there's a different intention behind your vision when you're a believer. Okay. So, um, and then at the end of the day, you're going to take um, account again of those three moments of the day. You're going to write them down because when you're writing, you're focused. When you're writing, you're focused. When you're thinking, you're wandering. <laughs> but when you're focused, the only thing you can focus on are the words that you're writing and what the Holy Spirit is giving and flowing through you. And um, you're going to end with appreciation um, and self-affirmation as well. And as you do this, you will see how you've been provided for all day, every day. So this um, dimension of abiding in provision is something that has been going on since we started this process. And it is happening whether you're realizing it or not. But what we want now is supernatural awareness. And I've know I've been in seasons of my life where I've asked God for provision. And the great thing is there's a, a name of God that I give you in here that I did not come up with. Of course, it's um, all the names of God come from scripture references of where God tells you how to refer to him, see him and believe in him. And of course, Jehovah Jireh is our provider. It's one of the more common ones because it's in a lot of songs <laughs> and because we always are some needy humans, right? At the end of the day, we need more and more and more of God and the great thing about him as provider. He says, well, that is who I am and I want you to come to me. But I do believe that he is calling us out of being beggars. He wants us to come to him as citizens, as daughters, as heirs, as sons, as warriors, so if you were coming to God as a warrior, if you were coming to God as an heir, would you not ask for something different and in a different way with a different posture than if um, you were coming as a beggar? Both are asks. But um, thinking, believing that someone has something is different than believing that someone wants something for you. And you would approach that question very differently as well. I believe most of us pray, pray um, beggar prayers as opposed to builder prayers because the provision, supernatural provision that God gives us and has available to us is not just to meet your basic needs because what God wants here in your life in this season for such a time as this is for you to be someone who has the resources necessary to build the kingdom. So I just want to elevate this message right now beyond survival beyond just basic need and survival. And if that is where you're at, this is where God is going to meet you for the purpose of what I'm talking to you about now, which is where he's going to take you. Every need shall and can and will be met. There's some, some things on our part, like obedience, right? So wherever you're at, I want to invite you higher because that's my J-O-B. That's my calling, that's my assignment, that's my task here. So when we think about um, provision, a lot of times we think about physical needs. We think about the actual practical things that we're missing, that we're wanting, that we desire. It could be food, shelter, clothing, money, job, relationship. It could be a baby, babies. It could be um, a change somehow in, in your life that you're looking for. Or it could be something that feels like it's so far out of reach that you don't know how you're going to actually be able to do it. You could be in a place where you're facing kind of the, this rock in a hard place. You just don't know what you're going to do. And sometimes you are playing for those basic needs, right? And God loves to provide in those spaces. Sometimes, I'm not saying this, but sometimes um, we also look at these circumstances and we doubt whether God is going to actually come through for us because it seems like these things keep happening in our lives. It seems like you're being punished, that you're forgotten, that this is just your lot in life. And all of abiding is designed to elevate us. We talked about that in the ambition dimension, in the sixth dimension, that is designed to elevate us, to believe higher. And so um, here in this provision space, I know when I, I think about the time where I was believing God the most for provision was when... I was engaged to be married over a decade plus ago. I mean, a, a while now, goodness gracious. And I was engaged to be married. And six days before my wedding, I found out that my then fiance was cheating on me. And it was not only absolutely devastating, it was really bad timing. <laughs> One, it was so close to the wedding. Had a, a remaining $40,000 bill of wedding expenses that needed to be paid. And I had closed my relationship down for 
I had closed my business down, I should say. I was managing NFL and NBA players. Um, I had closed that business down to become a wife and a bonus mom to his three children. And um, on top of that, because I went all in believing that faith was having a plan A and not worrying about a plan B, I did not know how I was going to pay my bills. So I have this these outstanding wedding bills for a wedding that's not going to happen. And by the way, why do we spend so much on flowers that don't last? These flowers, you've seen them the whole series because they're going to be here. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> I love fresh flowers, but man, they cost a lot for just a one day event. Um, but I was heartbroken, hit, I hit rock bottom financially, emotionally, and spiritually. And I wasn't, I mean, I needed income. And as I was praying for God, praying, I don't know what I was praying in that season. Honestly, I can't say I was praying about one thing because so many things were going wrong. So many things felt like they were falling apart. I felt abandoned. I knew that my life was not my own and I knew that God was somehow getting my attention, but I did not like the way he was doing it. I absolutely did not. This is actually the story that kind of started this whole series here um, in the book, Believe Bigger. So if you're going through disruption, this is a great companion for your daily blessings uh, process. And if you are going through disruption where your life is falling apart or parts of it seem to be breaking and cracking and messing you up, um, this is ideal for you because it really deals with how do you believe bigger than where you are right now when life gives you every reason to stop, to wallow, and to, to, bear, to be buried under it. Um, but this is also why this daily blessings process, by the way, is so powerful for reframing your mindset. Because in, every day that you're doing your process, you're learning how to believe bigger. But I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. And I was praying for more than anything. I was praying for worthiness. Not that others would see me, that I wasn't wanting someone else to want me. That's not the kind of worthiness I'm talking about. Because when you're um, virgin hope is defiled, meaning, and I believe every woman will have her virgin hope defiled, where you want something, you believe in something, you give your whole life into it purely, and the very person or people who are supposed to catch you are the, is the very one and the very folks who drop you. That didn't just ruin your trust. I wasn't sure if the sky was blue anymore because all the things that I thought I knew because I walked with God, I felt I was obedient. I felt I did all of these things the right way. How did I end up here, Lord? <laughs> I mean, you know me, I've known you, been following you since I was a little kiddo, since I was a toddler. How does something like this happen to me? And what I can tell you now being on the other side of, um, of that level of disruption, heartbreak, and betrayal and now even being in a season of recently losing my father, uh, who was the first man who ever loved me and the first man that I ever loved. I am grateful. And I know some of you may not have had a wonderful father, but my father was a great dad. He was a great dad to me. I always say the, con the consistent love of a father builds a courageous daughter. And this Believe Bigger message that I have in large part is uh, reflective of the spiritual DNA and the physical DNA of my father that flows through my veins. In fact, the Daily Blessings journal is dedicated to my dad. And you may have heard me say before, I finished this work. I spent seven hours the, the morning of his visitation. And I tell you all of that to say, um, when we're in these difficult seasons, we can believe it's the end of the road. We can believe that there's nothing ahead. And when we believe that our prayers are not, we're not, we're praying from a place of survival versus destiny and possibility. It's just natural to do that. God is so gracious to answer higher than what it is that we've asked for. But what I want to invite you to do as you're abiding in the provision of God is to go beyond need and to learn how to pray seed. Very big difference. Learning how to pray need will get you maybe through something, but it won't necessarily elevate you into um, a higher level of life. It won't elevate you into prosperity or abundance, prosperity of heart, relationship. Um, all of your needs, 
you know, God doesn't just want to supply our need. He wants us to, he wants to surpass it because he wants us operating from a place of overflow. This is the type of vessel that is able to have real kingdom impact. He doesn't want us scrimping around trying to bless people or just trying to make it. That's not his plan. That's not his desire. It's not holy. Um, but so I want us, I want to invite you as you go through this uh, seventh dimension to pray and believe and abide from a place of seed as opposed to just need. You're not a beggar. You're an heir. And you're a warrior. And what would a warrior come for? What would a warrior come to the throne of God for? What is it you're asking God for that has nothing to do with your destiny? So you're asking God for crumbs when he wants to give you an entire kingdom here on earth that you get to enjoy and have dominion over your territory. As you expand the territory of the kingdom, God expands your territory because that expands the territory of the kingdom. Are you with me? And so um, I think Moses is a great example of this. Um, in, in Exodus 14, Moses is leading the Israelites, you know, out of Egypt and they've been in this wilderness. And now they have been invited in Exodus 14, uh, verse one, it says, um, the Lord said to Moses, I'll skip through some of the, the uh, difficult words to pronounce, but basically tell them to turn back and to encamp. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite Baal. Now, this is at the sea, the Red Sea, right? This, the, this infamous Red Sea. And at this point, the Israelites are pretty mad because now they have, there are people who have been enslaved, which is very different than calling people slaves. People are not slaves. That is not how they were uh, created in heaven. The um, greed and demonic nature that can overtake man will enslave people. It has happened around the world and in the country that I live in, but people are not slaves. They are enslaved. Okay. And there's a human condition, a disease of mind and spirit and pride and, and, um, superiority that creates that. And so these people, these people who were enslaved, uh, were, were being led out of captivity, but they're being led into something that they've never experienced before. And sometimes we want to go back to what is familiar, even if it is inferior to our destiny, because at least it's familiar as opposed to an uncertain future where someone can give us crumbs as opposed to what Moses was trying to lead them into, what God was giving them, was a kingdom, a promised land, right? So they're mad. They're grumbling. They're angry at Moses. And in verse, let's see, let me scroll down. In verse 10 of chapter 14 in Exodus, they were terrified and they cried out to the Lord in the verse 11, which number 11 is the vision, is the number of sight and vision and being able to perceive and see. They said to Moses, was it, was, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? <laughs> What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you, didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. Let us stay where we are. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. How often have we done this, right? Being like, God, you, I did what you, I did what you asked me to do, God. I surrendered. I've been faithful. And this is my reward. Don't leave me out here on a, uh, on a limb. I want you to let me know, have you not been in that season in your life in the past? And maybe you're there right now. Like, why, why is it not working, God? Why is this happening when I have been obedient, where I left, I took the step, I took the faith walk. Why is it not pretty? <laughs> why is it painful? And here's the powerful thing here in verse 13. I want to show you what the faith stance and words and voice looks like of someone who's been abiding in the provision of God. You abide in the provision of God well before you experience the full provision of God. Moses in, in verse 13 says, uh, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians will see, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Mm. 
the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. But you know the story. It's a really commonly known story, whether you know Christ or not. And it's the story of how God parts the Red Sea. You've got an ocean in front of you and you've got an army ready to kill you behind you. There is nowhere for you to go. And God told you to camp here. And if you're in disruption or if you're in a place of devastation or despair and you're asking and you're seeking for God to do something new, the good news is he has an excellent track record of delivering in the middle of difficulty, providing deliverance, but also delivering what you need in the middle of difficulty. Here's the difficult thing to understand, to wrap our minds around in um, Believe Bigger uh, one of the things I talk about is Isaiah 48, 21 on split rock moments. Uh, da, 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 da. which is basically he led them through the desert. He split the rock and then water gushed out. I haven't picked this up in a second. I didn't plan to do this today, but one thing when I was going through this process of asking God, what is it you have for me in this disruption? Because I know that uh, you love me too much to have caused this level of public embarrassment, uh, having to call my wedding, choosing, I didn't have to, I chose to call my wedding off six days before. Um, This betrayal, infidelity, just this very public thing was not great, was not fun. But I knew enough that my life was not my own and that he actually had to have something greater for me because I actually had enough faith to believe that God loved me. And um, yeah, Isaiah 48, 21. I just wanted to make sure I was giving you the right scripture reference. So in Believe Bigger, I, I, when I saw this, it says, it says they did not thirst when God, when he led them through the deserts, he made water flow for them from the rock. He split the rock and water gushed out. I had been having dreams about deserts at the time. And you can feel like that when you feel abandoned. But when he said they did not thirst when he led them, it says he led. And then I come back over here and same thing happened to Moses. Moses, he told them, go in and camp in the hard place, led them through the desert, led them to a difficult place. Now, now they got all water around them, but now they can't escape because there's too much. We're desert. And now we've got a flooding, an ocean in front of us. Both situations, God put us there, y'all. He puts us there. Sometimes, yes, our choices and our decisions can lead us into certain places and spaces that are never designed to necessarily be the representation of our blessing, our calling. Sometimes we just make bad choices. But God already made a countenance and allowance for that. And sometimes he does want us to learn from those things so that we don't repeat things that are unnecessary till we have to get bailed out. But what I'm trying to tell you about praying at praying seed versus need is you've got to be able to see what's around you, even when there's a sea in front of you and recognizing these are the perfect circumstances that God is going to use to show you supernatural provision that far surpasses anything that you could ever hope, imagine, want, or desire. I told you that I was a bonus mom. I was about to become a bonus mom when I was engaged before to three children. And when that relationship was called off, I didn't know if I'd ever have kids. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't doubt it at the time, but you know, you don't, will I find somebody? You don't want to start over. You can't even imagine your life without them, all that kind of stuff. And um, I'll fast forward, we get married. I find an an incredible husband. My husband is wonderful, um, a different person. (laughs) And, but we had trouble conceiving for six years. And I wonder if I'd ever be a mom. I wonder if that was my only experience, but I believed it would happen. I just didn't see it happening. S-E-E, like a S-E-A, right? I didn't see it happening and see how it would happen. And, um, but I will tell you today, that I'm now a birth mom to triplets. I had three babies in six minutes. Every two minutes, they brought another child out. (laughs) And I carried these daughters. I carried these girls and they're super healthy. And so when I'm talking about provision, I just didn't want to talk to you about having your bills paid. 
because I did have a financial need at the time, but I wasn't praying for my bills to be paid. I was praying for a path and a plan and a way. I was speaking life into destiny and purpose and potential. And I said, God, I'm a blank slate now. Tell me what is it that you want to teach me? Because clearly you're trying to get my attention. Maybe God is putting us in what seems like impossible circumstances because we've become too dependent on the things that we would usually look to, to provide for us or deliver us. Okay. So the provision of God, the provision of God is more than just basic needs. This is learning how to become someone who is capable of uh, operating in the provision that the Holy Spirit gives all day, every day. This is what Jesus shows us. This is why he told the disciples, don't bring anything with you. He was teaching them how to operate in the provision of God in real time. And so the broken belief system that we have is asking, what can we do? What can I do? Versus asking, what does God have available? Instead of thinking, this is the broken, stinking thinking, what can I do? And then let me pray for God to bless me so that I can do it better. <laughs> we want to ask, um, what has God said he will do? And again, instead of asking, what can I do? And thinking that you are a part of this provision versus you being a recipient of of God's loving intention all day, every day, in every single way, we often ask, we need to be asking, what has God already done? So it's not what you can do. It, what does God have available? If you were to abide and believe, to believe that he has something available would believe, would cause you to believe that he is for you, that he's already working on your behalf that there is something that's already available. Maybe I don't need to do anything other than being able to see what he is already, what he's already doing, what he already said he will do and remembering what he's already done so that my faith history will calibrate me back into that frequency, right? What does he have available? What has he said he will do? What has he already done? Because expectancy says in all things, I know you're providing for me, God, because you love me right? And expectancy gives us eyes to see it, ears to hear it, and faith to seize it. That's what the Daily Blessings Method is designed to develop in you. And this skill, this spiritual practice of maturity has already been being developed in, in you over these last several weeks. So this series, this time, this these seven days abiding in the provision of God, I want to ask you, I want to challenge you to abide and to think and believe from the place of seed because seed, God provides seed to the sower. The sower is someone who's going to be a builder of a, a territory developer an expander versus just need because then God gives you more than what it is that you need. He gives you what you need in order to feed his flock with whatever he wants you to build, become, and do. So um, supernatural provision, lastly, supernatural provision is not what you wait for. It's what you, um, it's, it's, oh, let me say it this way. I wrote this down. I want to make sure I write exactly how God, say it exactly how God said it. Supernatural provision is not what you wait for. It's allowing God to show you and supply what you're made for. Supernatural, supernatural provision is not what you wait for. It's allowing God to show and supply what you were made for. We're talking about next level living here, friends. We're not just talking about getting by. We're talking about growing, expanding the kingdom, being in alignment with our assignment, operating at the pace of destiny. Okay. And when you do that, this is so important to understand. You're vision and the provision for that vision that God gives you will be fully funded because you cannot afford the plan that God has for you. <laughs> you will not be, and you will look at it and think that there is a deficit as opposed to recognizing you are now positioned for a great deposit. All right. Know that God is for you. Your vision will be funded by belief, obedience, grace, and love. 
And so as you go through your daily blessings, don't forget your, your charge to abide for the week that will be outlined for you on how to stay anchored in your intention as you do each of your daily blessings methods in the morning and in the evening, as you answer your daily props, prompts, since there's a different one each day. And also I give you a prayer moxie for the week, a powerful prayer, not a beggar prayer, praying at the level of creation, at the level of seed and not need, and also praying as if and not what if these are believe bigger moxie prayers that cause your faith to grow up as you're praying them. And I want to encourage you to start writing those prayers as well for yourself each day in the margins of your journal as well too. But that is it for today. We have made it through the seventh dimension, the provision of God. I thought this was going to be so much smaller. I mean, shorter. I really did, but it's all good. Um, I will see you next time on Daily Blessings, our showcase outlining the, uh, the dimensions of abiding in God and also the Daily Blessings method inside the Daily Blessings devotional and journal. Be sure that you get your copy at dailyblessingsjournal.com. One thing as you can see behind me, there are a lot of complimentary resources. I mention all of them because they do kind of run together. The Believe Bigger devotional, the prayer cards, uh, 365 days of Believing Bigger, the, um, the uh, desk calendar. All of these things are designed to kind of help us stay um, in a position to receive elevation. So all these other resources I want to encourage you to take a look at as well too. They're they really all do go together. They they have the same birth mom. <laughs> all right, I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless. I believe in you. And all of heaven does too. Bye-bye.